Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome everybody back to another video starting the week off with a collection update. And we are in a new month. As you can see, it's going to be a good month because we got Benny the Jet Rodriguez on the calendar, which is nice. Um, so we're going to just grab March by the balls and get through uh, these last couple weeks of cold weather and uh, have a good time. Always having a good time. Um, quite a bit of stuff here, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and shut my big fat yapper and get into it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, first up, I did get one CD. Um, I got this from uh, Japan. Now, this is not the guy that I'd normally buy bootlegs from. Um, this is actually another guy that I purchase stuff from time to time. And he had this, which is Aerosmith uh, Taste of Rarities. Um, and I do, there is a second volume of this, which I do have, and I was finally able to get the first one off of uh, eBay. So on here, there's uh, 17 songs, and it's all a mixture of live performances, um, demos and outtakes, different mixes, all kinds of cool stuff on here. Um, you have the Urban Dude mix of Dude Looks Like a Lady. The Rockapella mix of Ragdoll, the Elevator mix of Love in an Elevator, uh, the Club mix of The Other Side, um, Love in an Elevator Live on the MTV uh, Video Music Awards. I missed those back in the day, not so much now, um, when music was good. Um, there's a outtake called Little Grass Shack from the Nine Lives sessions. Uh, there is the Cholo mix of Pink. Uh, the Miami Madness mix of Taste of India. Um, the advanced mix of The Farm, which is extended from the album version. Pretty cool. Um, the Gap commercial that Joe Perry and Steven Tyler did. That's That audio is on here. Uh, then you've got Pink and Fallen in Love is Hard on the Knees from the European MTV Music Awards. And then you have Walk This Way. Come Together, Don't Want to Miss a Thing, and Stop Messing Around from the premiere of Armageddon. Very cool. And then the last track is another live version of I Don't Want to Miss a Thing from the 1999 Grammy. So, very cool. Um, you know, I always love picking up, you know, particularly Aerosmith bootlegs, whether they're on CD or vinyl. Um, you know, always like adding to the collection. And I'm happy that I finally got volume one of Taste of Rarities. Now, there's another um, rarities set that is out there that I have, again, the first volume of. It's called A Bunch of Rarities. Um, I actually found that at one of the record stores that I go to, which is about an hour and a half from here. But it is always worth the drive. Um, but I'm looking out for volume two of that one, which I, you know, one of these days I'll be able to get. So, excuse me, I'm just really belchy today i don't know um i did get um and we'll go ahead and get into the records i did get a bunch of records and all of these i think it's all of them yeah all of these uh come from a record store that's about 40 minutes from here i went to uh actually went to fye to trade stuff in and of course they didn't take any of it um, but i still got some stuff which you'll see later and there is a record store maybe about 20, yeah, about 20 minutes from uh, that location, but it's 40 minutes from here because, yeah, um, you, logistics. But uh, all these come from that particular record store. So first up, I got one uh, seven inch. This is uh, Rush Closer to the Heart, and this is actually a re-release. This is from, uh, I think, Record Store Day. 2017 yes it is uh, celebrating the 40th anniversary of a farewell to kings which is a great album great rush album and closer to the heart is actually one of my favorite rush songs and the b-side to this is uh madrigal and what's really cool about this one is it comes with i'll show the record in a second but it comes with a custom adapter. So there you go. And you again, you just put this inside the uh, the middle of the record to help play better. Because when I first started collecting singles, I didn't know about the adapters and stuff. 
and I'm putting them on there and they're not playing right. And I was like, what the fuck? And I, I didn't know it was wrong. Um, but I found out that you need the adapter to put in to sit on the, the center of the record player. So there's the record right there. The label is the same on both sides. Very, uh, this is definitely a hundred. Actually, this might even be 200 gram vinyl. This is really, really thick. Um, it's def yeah, this is definitely thicker than 180. Um, but very, very cool. Very cool stuff. Again, um, just that's how it is at these record shops. You just gotta, you gotta dig. And I was able to find this one and I was like, oh, a Rush? Definitely Rush, number one. Uh, but number two, it's a, a record store day exclusive from 2017. And it had the custom adapter, which is very cool. So, yeah, there's Rush. I know that was very long-winded. <laughs> um, next up... Uh, another single, I actually got a 12-inch single. This is a uh, radio promo. This is Ted Nugent, I Want to Tell You, uh, which is very cool. And this is actually a Beatles song. This is a cover of a Beatles song uh, written by the Quiet Beatle, George Harrison, my favorite member of the Beatles. And this is the special FM version. Um, so again, this was a radio uh, promo that was sent out. It does have the gold stamp on there. And I was... Uh, I was actually looking for, because uh, he had a Ted Nugent bootleg, and I did get it. I, he still had it, so you'll see it in a minute here. But I also saw this. I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. You know, radio, single, 12-inch, not bad at all. Um, next up, this is actually pretty cool. It is Bruce Willis, The Return of Bruno. Now, for you youngins out there, that don't really know anything about Bruce Willis. Um, back in the day, back in the 80s, Bruce Willis actually, um, in addition to starring on Moonlighting, because this, this is pre-Die Hard, um, Bruce Willis was also a singer. Um, when he first started out, back in the day, he would you know, be a typical bartender like he was, and he would also uh, play music and stuff and he would play harmonica and he would sing and he did put out actually after moonlighting and stuff came on he actually put out a few albums and this is one of them this is called the return of bruno and he did kind of like make a character and stuff out of it because there was a i think it was on hbo there was like a hbo thing where they had like different music videos and it came up with this story and stuff. Um, I would, I don't know if that's on VHS or whatever, but I would like to find that. Um, but this is one of the albums that he did. This is the first one. Um, the other one is called, I don't remember what, I was going to say Respect Yourself, but Respect Yourself is the song on here. Um, you know, I can't remember what the other album is called, but I would like to get that one. But um, very cool stuff. His cover of Under the Boardwalk is on here, which I do have that on a 7-inch single. Um, and there's some other stuff on here. Uh, Secret Agent Man, um, Respect Yourself. So good stuff. Um, I have heard this stuff before. Uh, Bruce Willis is a good singer. You know, I, I do, of course, uh, Hudson Hawk. He sang in that movie. He sang in some other movies that he was in. Um, but yeah, I don't know why he never really... After Die Hard and all that, I don't know why he never really pursued music more. I don't know. Um, but I did get this one, which is pretty cool. And it's actually still sealed. Uh, still brand new factory seal, which is very nice. So I'm looking forward to listening to this. Because, again, some of the songs on here I have heard. I just haven't heard all of them. And, while, you know, while I'm sitting here, I might as well just pull my phone up and look up the name of this album because it's going to bother me and I, I know it's the cover he's walking on the beach I don't know why I cannot remember the name of the damn album I don't know if it don't kill you it just makes you stronger yeah that's the name of the other album um, right and yeah he sang um on Moonlighting, he sang. Hudson Hawk, he sang. Uh, 
Rug, the Rugrats movie he was in, he sang. He was, and I do remember, and it says it here, he was on a Blues Traveler album. I do remember that. And, yeah, like, Bruce Willis used to jam with, like, the Allman Brothers and stuff back in the day. And I would like to find those concerts, you know. Um, but, yeah, The Return of Bruno originally aired as a one-hour special on HBO and later released on VHS. Okay. It is a mockumentary starring Bruce Willis as his fictional alter ego, Bruno Rodol, uh, Rodolini, um, a legendary blues musician who influenced, as the story goes, a number of famous musicians. Okay, cool. Um, it is on, like I said, it is on VHS, narrated by Dick Clark. Uh, Michael J. Fox is in it, Elton John, Phil Collins, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys, Paul Stanley, John Bon Jovi, the Bee Gees. And Ringo Starr. Okay, very, very cool. I'll have to... Yeah, I'll have to find that on VHS. Again, I do... Like, I remember my dad telling me about that when I was a kid. Like, yeah, there was this thing with Bruce Willis, and he was like a... I'm like, oh, well, I'll have to find it. Uh, but now that I know that it's on VHS, I'll grab it. So I know that was long-winded, but... Uh, even though Bruce Willis is a fucking jerk-off, I'm still a fan of his. Um, next up, this one is also uh, still sealed. This is... Um, new music from the television series Miami Vice. This is the second Miami Vice soundtrack album, Miami Vice 2. I do have the first one um, in the other room, and I did not even know that they did another one, which is very cool. So, yeah, very, very cool. Like I said, this one is still sealed. So on here, you got Gladys Knight in the Pips. Send it to me. Take me home by Phil Collins. Um, you've got Crockett's theme. At the end of side one, which I love that theme song. Um, Jackson Brown on here, Live in the Balance. A um, couple other songs. And then you have the instrumental uh, of the New York theme and the original Miami Vice theme, which is very cool. So, yeah, um, definitely need to get Miami Vice on Blu-ray. Uh, the complete series is on Blu-ray. Actually, for a, a real, I think it's like 50 bucks online, so it's actually a pretty decent price. Um, but yeah, I saw this and I was like, okay, didn't even know it was, it was a thing, but hell, I'll grab it, you know? And then next up, I did get two, uh, Queen records. I did finally, uh, was able to get some more Queen and these are the original pressings, which is what I prefer. So first up we have Jazz, which is very nice. And on here... Um, you got Fat Bottom Girls, Bicycle Race, uh, Let Me Entertain You, which is a good song, um, Don't Stop Me Now, and a bunch of other stuff on here. And it actually includes, I mean, not only is it a gatefold, which is very cool, but it does have the, if things want to behave here... <laughs> Okay, it has the original poster, but I cannot show it on YouTube because it has nudity. Um, but it's it's good nudity, so I can't complain. It's a bunch of naked women on bicycles, which is weird considering who Freddie Mercury was. Um, but yeah, I, I, obviously I cannot show that on YouTube because somebody will bitch about boobs and stuff. So, But it does have the original poster in case people were wondering. So that is Jazz. Um, and this one was 25 but I get it. Queen is really, really popular again because of the movie. But I'm like, you know what? It's the original pressing, and it has the poster. I'll I'll take it. And then this one uh, was 20 and it's an original pressing. And this is A Day at the Races, which is very cool. So on here, uh, Tie Your Mother Down, fantastic Queen song. Uh, good old fashioned lover boy, somebody to love, which is I think is my brother's favorite Queen song. Um, there's a lot of great stuff on here, and this also is a gatefold. Uh, very cool shot of the band in there with all the lyrics. Uh, yeah, this is what vinyl is all about. You ain't gonna get this shit with CD, um, you know. But very cool. Um, again, got a couple more original Queen pressings, and again, I know that. All the white people out there losing their fucking minds because the movie came out. But you know what? I've 
been a Queen fan as long as I can remember. Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved their music. So, yeah, I was doing it before it was cool, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Next up, um, finally got some Alice Cooper. I don't, I think I have Constrictor, and there's another Alice Cooper that I have, but I don't have a lot of Alice Cooper on vinyl, which is weird because Alice Cooper is another artist that I really like. Um, so I have here an album that certainly needs no introduction, Welcome to My Nightmare, which this was the first Alice Cooper solo album after he bought the name from the band and moved on. So, yeah, very cool. Uh, classic album. The title track is on here. Black Widow, Only Women Bleed. Uh, Steven, which they're actually playing Steven in concert now, which is very cool. It's been a long time since they played that. Um, and Vincent Price is on here as well, which is very cool. Um, he is the curator, the character that he plays on here, uh, which is very nice. But yeah, I find, it was 10 bucks, and it's still in the shrink wrap, which is nice. It is opened. Um, but I was like, hell yeah, some Alice Cooper. Yeah, I have Constrictor. And there's another one that I have on vinyl. I just can't think of the name of it right now. Um, I had a bunch on CD, but I got rid of them because they're all on vinyl. I would rather just have them on vinyl. Um, but this this is bugging me now. I, again, I know I have Constrictor. Um, Alice Cooper's Greatest Hits. Okay, that was the other one. I do have... Um, Alice Cooper's greatest hits on vinyl. Okay, cool. I couldn't again. I could not think of of the other one. I just want to double check. I have yeah, Constrictor and Welcome to My Nightmare on uh, out of the out of the solo Alice Cooper stuff. Yeah, um, and then out of the the band Alice Cooper, the only one I have is the greatest hits, which is cool. But yeah, um, I'm always on the lookout for Alice Cooper stuff. And again, like I've just ever again ever since I was a kid, I've just always really liked Alice Cooper. And I did see him in concert uh, five years ago. Now, holy shit, um, he is on tour with Lita Ford and Tesla. So I do want to definitely go see that because I like all three artists. Um, but love Alice Cooper. Love me some Alice Cooper. So next up, um, I got some more Ted Nugent here. Um, actually. Yeah, let me kind of put these in a little bit of a better order. Yeah, that's all the uh, that's all the Ted Nugent. Okay, cool. Um, so first up, uh, the first two that I got is when Ted Nugent was still with the Amboy Dukes. Uh, this one is Marriage on the Rocks, Rock Bottom, uh, which is very cool. Uh, a little disappointed about this, but I was like, you know what? I can, I can kind of ignore that. Um, but yeah, this is before Ted Nugent went off on his own. Um, this is what, 1970s. So this, I think, is... This might be the last album that he did. Um, or it's a compilation album. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, it, it, okay, yeah. This is a compilation album, actually. Of different... Because it says here, originally released. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a re-release. My bad. This is actually a re-release of one of the older Amboy Duke. Yeah, because it says here, recorded December 1969. Okay, yeah, this is actually a re- For some reason, they re-released it. It's like, yeah, my bad. I had the facts mix mixed up there. And then this is actually uh, Survival of the Fittest Live. So this is a live uh, Amboy Dukes album. Uh, recorded live at the East Town Theater, of Detroit, Michigan, on July 31st and August 1st, 1970. Okay, so very, very cool. Um, yeah, so nice. Okay, very. And the, the artwork on the back is really cool. I really like that. Um, but yeah, got some uh, Ted Nugent. I'm not too familiar with the Amboy Duke stuff. Most of the Ted Nugent that I know is the solo stuff. So there you go. And then this, again, was the bootleg that he had that I was talking about. This one is called You Love Band, or You Love Bands When They Play It Hard. Um, and this is a solo Ted Nugent. This was recorded in May, uh, May 1st, 1976 at the Swing Auditorium. Um, I don't, it's, and it says here, Ted will tell you what city. That's what I love about these old bootlegs. You just get this, like, photocopy artwork, 
and people write kind of whatever they want down here, which is funny, um, you know. But the first song on here is actually from Amboy Dukes, and then the rest is uh, Nugent Solo Band. The rest on here, Storm Troopin', Great White Buffalo, Hey Baby, Hibernation, and Motor City Madhouse. So obviously not the complete concert, but that's just how it is with bootlegs. But still very cool to have, in my opinion. So, yeah. Um, I saw, I think, like, the first time I ever went there, which maybe was about two years ago. Maybe a little bit more. Um, I can't remember the first time I went to this record store. But I saw this, and when I went in there this last week, I was like, I hope he still has this. And he did. So I definitely picked it up. So very cool. And then next up, I got, this is a uh, radio show. This is uh, Off the Record Special with Mary Turner. Uh, again, this used to be a live radio show, and this is actually a Allman Brothers show from 1991, it says, which is very cool. So, And it does have the cue sheet in it. And these, again, when they used to do these back in the day, these would be syndicated all over the United States, so they would play in different markets. But again, here's the cue sheet. Um, it says here, off the record special featuring the Allman Brothers Band, uh, show 91-2, which means the second show of the year 1991, um, for broadcast the week of January 7th, 1991. So there you go. Uh, the song's on here. Uh, True Gravity, Loaded Dice, Whipping Post, uh, Seven Turns, Ramblin' Man. Um, then we have Li uh, Memory of Elizabeth Reed, Low Down, Dirty Mean, One Way Out. Jessica, Midnight Rider, Ain't Wasting Time No More, Good Clean Fun, Shine It On, Statesboro Blues, and It Ain't Over Yet. And it says total time with, including local breaks, 59 minutes and 29 seconds. And it does have um, the the commercials in here, like there's Kmart, U.S. Army, um, different stuff on here, uh, Volkswagen, you know, a bunch of stuff on here, which is cool. And, of course, it breaks down the segments and the advertisements and stuff, which is very nice. And I love getting these. Um, I do have – it's not a concert, but I do have, like, a, a radio, like, rock talk show one. Um, but I do love finding these at record stores and stuff. These are very cool because most of these back in the day were supposed to be destroyed after they were done. But I'm so happy that uh, people like myself kept them. And, you know, preserve them for people to enjoy until, you know, the time, until the world ends, which will probably never, but still very cool. Um, next up, got an ACDC uh, EP here. Um, this is a 12-inch. Um, it is called Nervous Shakedown, and it has previously uh, unreleased live versions of different songs, which is very cool. So, very, very cool. And here... It was promoting the Monsters of Rock Festival that year, which is very nice, um, which that was at Donington in uh, England, um, Saturday, August 18th, 1984. So the song Nervous Shakedown from the album Flick of the Switch is on here, and the other three songs are live from November 1983. That show might actually be either the Joe Louis Arena or Cobo Hall. Um because I know that show has been heavily bootlegged and stuff. It might be that. Um, actually, let me take a look on the inside because, again, it might... No, it's just the record in here. Which the record's in really good shape, which is always a nice thing. Um, yeah, I have to look more into this one, but I think that's where these recordings come from. Again, it's either the Joe Louis Arena or the Kobo Hall show, if I'm not mistaken. But the live tracks, I know I got kind of distracted there. Uh, rock and Roll and Noise Pollution, great song. Uh, Sin City, one of my favorite Bon Scott songs. And uh, This House is on Fire, which comes from the Flick of the Switch album as well. Um, but very cool. Again, ACDC, always been a huge fan. Always trying to get more ACDC stuff. All right. And then next up, these, um, these next bunch... These were actually all free because um, outside his store, he has like all these records stacked up and, and all that. And they're all like a dollar and stuff. But he gave these 
I guess, because I bought so much. Uh, and then he also gave me a discount on stuff, which is every time I go in there, he always takes care of me. Tom is the guy's name. Very nice guy. Um, but these were all free. He just gave them to me. So first up, I got Walt Disney's Happiest Song, which I, I'm i like, okay, that first of all, the artwork is really cool on here. And then it has songs all from the movies. So in here, um, yeah, I just want to make sure. So you have uh, Hi Ho from Snow White, uh, When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio, um, Bippity, <laughs> Bippity Boppity Boo from Cinderella, um, You Can Fly from Peter Pan, uh, Super Califragilistic Expeditious um, from uh, Mary Poppins, uh, Bare Necessities from The Jungle Book. So a bunch of cool stuff on here. So very cool. Not bad for free. I'm not complaining. And then I got a couple uh, Bill Cosby records. I know people are probably pissing and moaning about that, but, you know, my opinion's my opinion on the subject, and I don't think whatever happened is what happened. So first up, um, this is actually his first album. Um, Bill Cosby is a very funny fellow, right? So this is his first comedy album. Very cool. I do have a bunch more here. And then I have uh, Bill Cosby is not himself these days. Right on, right on. So that's pretty cool. And there is some music on here, which is nice. And then I have from the original motion picture, Bill Cosby himself, which is very cool. Great movie. Um, cool stuff. So, yeah, I don't, I'm not getting into all that right now, but yeah. And then I got Linda Rothstadt's. Greatest Hits, so very cool, you know, especially for free, uh, very cool. And then this is a gatefold. There we go, it just has the lyrics on the inside, but uh, on here, uh, You're No Good, which Van Halen ended up covering a couple years after this. Uh, That'll Be The Day, which is the Buddy Holly song. It Doesn't Matter Anymore, the Paul Anka song. Um, so good stuff on here, you know. Very, very cool. And then, um, because they were mixed in, these are, again, more of the ones that I purchased. So next up, this is uh, the special 12-inch dance single of Thriller, which I thought was cool. Um, I think it's just the regular version of Thriller. Um, maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Because it, it does say on here, but I think I looked at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to double check. Okay, special version. Okay, so it is a special version or whatever. So that's pretty cool. And then the B-side is just the instrumental version. But very, very cool. Uh, Thriller is definitely not one of my favorite Michael Jackson songs. I think I've heard it more than enough in my lifetime that I don't have to ever hear it again. It is still a good song. Um, but Michael Jackson has way better songs out there, at least in my opinion. Next up, this is actually pretty cool. This is... Um, Break the Chain by Raven. This is an EP that they did, and it's all autographed. Um, I know that is definitely John Gallagher's autograph from Raven. Um, and there is one, I think there's one, two, three or four more on here. And I'm not sure who all the other ones are. Um, and it says, to Scott, obviously my name is not Scott. Um, but I have to do a little research on the other autographs here. Um, but that is definitely John Gallagher's that I can make out. Um, but the other ones I'm, I'm not sure about, but yeah, Raven is a British metal band that I'm getting more into. Um, and I saw this, not only did I not have it, but it's autographed, which is pretty cool. Um, and on here, uh, they hang out with, uh, Udo, uh, Dirk Schneider. Um, I don't know who that is, but, um, Break the Chain was, is coming from the album uh, All for One, and then it has Born to be Wild, which I'm sh sure is the cover of the song, and then there's another song on here called Inquisitor, so very cool, and again, uh, I need to do, sit down and, and, and try to figure out who these autographs are, uh, but still very cool, you know, very cool stuff in my opinion. All right, next up, I got another Rolling Stones album. This is uh, Goat Head Soup. Very cool, and it does have the original insert, 
And it was only four bucks, so that was actually pretty cool. So, yeah, that's the insert, and then that's the other side. So the song's on here. Uh, you got Dancing with Mr. D, uh, Heartbreaker, Angie, which is a great song, uh, Star Star, a.k.a. Star Fucker. Um, there's, you know, classic uh, Rolling Stones that I did not have. Oh, and it has... Oh, well, it has that too, which is very cool. I guess this is the original insert. Um, but still cool. You know, very, very cool stuff. Again, always trying to get uh, more Rolling Stone stuff that I don't have. Come on, behave. There we go. But yeah, Star Star. Star Fucker, Star Fucker. Like, that's a good song. And then next, um, I got Santana's Greatest Hits, which is very cool. I have all these songs, but it's Santana. Um, excuse me. So on here, you got Evil Ways, Jingo, Hope You're Feeling Better, Samba Pati, Persuasion, Black Magic Woman, Oye Como Va, Everything's Coming Our Way, Sia Cabo, and Everybody's Everything. So again, great stuff on here. It was six bucks. I don't mind picking it up for the collection. Mm, nice. Definitely going to wash my hands after that. Looks like a turd or something. Um, yeah, I kind of feel violated now. I'll be back. The shit. <laughs> All right, let me get this out of the way quick. There we go. Sorry about that. Just, I guess, when you keep stuff in storage, you know, the mice get in and stuff, but oh well. So now the rest of these are all, all the rest of these are, yeah. Um, okay. Now the rest of these are all. Beatles, uh, except the first one, are all Beatles bootlegs. Uh, he was last time I went, um, I bought a bunch of Beatles bootlegs from him, and he said uh, there's a guy that he keeps slowly. He's buying his collection, and it's like all Beatles bootlegs, which is cool. So this first one, this is an official release. Um, this is the Beatles live at the Star Club in Hamburg, Germany, uh, 1962. Again, this is a official uh, Beatles live recording, which is cool. So again, this is the very, very early days. Um, a bunch of stuff on here. It says includes 13 never-before-released Beatles tracks. So that's just how it was back in the day before you know they started reissuing everything. But that's cool. And then again, these are all bootlegs. Some of these I actually already have. But I figured, you know what, number one... It's the Beatles, and number two, they're bootlegs, so I don't mind having, you know, multiple ones, and they're on vinyl, so it, it really doesn't matter to me. So this one, I actually, I think I have this one. Uh, this is their first U.S. performance at Carnegie Hall, February 12, 1964. I think this has been officially released and cleaned up and everything, but uh, still cool to have, in my opinion. This one... Um, I have this one as well. This is another uh, Hollywood Bowl copy, but it's a different bootleg, so you know it doesn't matter to me. And then this one is uh, Peace of Mind, um, which has the Ed Sullivan stuff and then some other stuff on here, but very cool. I think I have the Ed Sullivan stuff on another one. Um, this one's called uh, The Never Release Mary Jane. 
Um, it's got some stuff on here, and then it has an interview with the Beatles. This one is the Decagon session, so this is all demos and, and stuff like that. And then this one is the EMI outtakes. So again, um, you know, outtakes and, and stuff that never came out. Uh, side two is a live concert recorded in England on May 6, 1964. Um, so, okay, pretty cool. So, yeah, I, again, I don't, you know, especially vinyl, I don't mind having two or three, you know, because the quality will be different and stuff. You know, I don't mind having a couple different copies of them. You know, that's just... That's just my opinion. Um, but that's it for all the, the music. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into movies. Um, I did get a couple of VHS. Um, last time I got the first movie on a screener. And then this time I got Blade 2 on a screener. And very, very cool. Uh, the cover still, like the cutout of Blade is really glossy and stuff, which is very nice. And then there's the back. Um, of course, you know, over 80 million at the box office, uh, cross trailered on all about the Benjamins, Jason X and Queen of the Dam, 45 day pay-per-view window. Um, cool stuff. Very, very cool stuff. So I do have, uh, Blade 1 and 2, which were the only good ones. Um, I have the regular VHS and then I also have the screeners. And then I do actually have a bootleg of the first one that I found, which was pretty cool. And then this, um... Another eBay find. This is a two-tape set. It is The Return of Kiss. So this is all, um, it says here, uh, pro shot clips from the reunion tour. So this is, I'm assuming, because there's nothing on this one. So I'm assuming it's either, nothing written at least. I'm assuming it's either the same thing. It's all pro shot stuff or it's TV appearances and stuff like that from the reunion tour. And then this one, it, it says it's pro shot clips on here, which is very cool. So either way, uh, you know, it's Kiss, so there you go. And then I did, the rest are all DVD and Blu-ray. Um, I went, again, I went to FYE the, uh, last week to try and trade a bunch of stuff in. They wouldn't take any of it because they're in the process, of, or they got bought out and they're switching stuff over and all that, so... Yeah, which is unfortunate. But, of course, I did find some stuff. I actually got a few DVDs. Uh, first up, I've actually always wanted to see this movie. I remember when it came out back in 2006, 2005, 2006. Um, and I've never seen it, but they had it, you know, and this is the unrated director's cut of Stay Alive. Again, I've always wanted to see this movie. It's a, you know, video game type you know, story in a horror film, so I'm like, I'm sold, and Frankie Muniz is in it, um, Adam Goldberg from uh, uh, Saving Private Ryan, Days and Confused, a bunch of other movies, uh, Milo Ventimiglia is in it, who I've always liked, so not, I mean, for six ninety nine, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll definitely pick that up, but uh, yeah, I, again, I've never seen this, I've always wanted to so, looking forward to it. If I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. <laughs> and then next up, this was really cool to see. Unfortunately, they only had one of them. But it is a double feature of Elvira's movie Macabre. And this one has The Doomsday Machine and Werewolf of Washington. Um, so, this is the, the later Elvira series, I believe. Uh, this is when they brought it back. So... I was like, okay, cool. Um, and I don't know if all of them are on DVD. It doesn't, like, even if it's the older ones and stuff. Uh, but I saw this. I think this was, like, 90 cents because it was buy, buy two, get one for a dollar. But I get 10% off because I have the, the loyalty card. So I saw this, and I was like, okay, I'll definitely pick that up. So, yeah, um, Werewolf of Washington actually has uh, Dean Stockwell from Quantum Leap and uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2, amongst other things. Um, and it's still brand new. It has never been open, which is nice, even though it says used. Um, still very cool. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to checking this out, and I definitely want to get more uh, Elvira stuff 
in the collection. Because I, I remember Elvira growing up. So, yeah, I always liked Elvira. And then these are all the Blu-rays that I got. First up, this was just released last week. It is the uh, Scream Factory Collector's Edition of Pet Cemetery 2, which I, once they announced the features, I got really excited about because, um, number one, the movie is in 4K, which is nice. Number two, there is a commentary with the director, uh, Mary Lambert, and then there's interviews with Edward Furlong, uh, Clancy Brown, which is very cool, and then his name isn't on here, but the the other kid in the movie, they interview him, and that's it. Um, but they were, someone told me that they were trying to get the work print, but Paramount wouldn't give it to them or something, or it was too, the tape was jacked up, or I don't know. I don't know what the reason was, but I was a little disappointed that the work print wasn't on there. And this is a two disc, so I don't know, but, um, yeah, someone told me that they actually tried to get the work print version, but it didn't work out for whatever reason. Uh, but still very cool, in my opinion. I have not seen this movie in quite a while. Um, it definitely freaked me out as a kid. I mean, that's the idea. It's a horror film. Um, but it's still a cool movie, in my opinion. And I still have never seen the first one. I've never seen the original Pet Cemetery. Next up, um, this is a WWE movie, which I know most of them are horrible, but I got this based upon Edge, and it is Bending the Rules. Um, Jamie Kennedy is also in it, who I like, but um, I heard that this one was actually good, because Edge was in it, and Edge did a really good job and stuff, so I'm looking forward to, to seeing this based on that, but also... Um, Jennifer Esposito is in it, who, uh, she was married to Bradley Cooper for a while. Um, Alicia Witt, who was in Urban Legend, uh, she's in it. Philip Baker Hall from Rush Hour. Uh, okay, so, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what happens. Again, I know a lot of these WWE movies suck, um, but we'll see about this one. Next up, I got a replacement copy of American Reunion because my Blu-ray does not play. And then this one, I think, was also like 90 cents, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. But yeah, um, my again, my Blu-ray, for whatever reason, I, I cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it, and it still doesn't work. So I'll go ahead and throw that copy away. The Just the Blu-ray, I'll take the DVD copy to Goodwill or something and... Uh, yeah, now I have American Reunion on Blu-ray, a movie that I actually really like. Next up, I got a classic here with Cool Hand Luke, Paul Newman in his signature role. Also, uh, George Kennedy is in the movie, Strother Martin. Um, great stuff in here. So, like it says on the front, what we've got here is a failure to communicate. I had a teacher in school, well he was a substitute teacher, but he would always say that, which was funny. Is it always cracked me up with that. Uh, next up, finally found this particular release of this movie. Um, everywhere I went, it was always the older Blu-ray, but I finally was able to get this for five bucks, which was not bad. And it is the 20th anniversary edition of Independence Day. Again, um, been trying to get this particular Blu-ray because there's new extra features. Uh, it does have both cuts of the movie on here, which is cool, but um, I really wanted it to get the the more of the features. But yeah, um, and I only I've only ever had this movie on VHS. I've never had it on DVD. Um, but finally, I was able to get the 20th anniversary edition. I was like, okay, definitely gonna buy that. But everywhere I went, whether it was new or used, it was always the older Blu-ray. And I was like, I don't want the older Blu-ray. I want this one. So finally got it. Next up, I got uh, Everybody Wants Some, which is the quasi-spiritual sequel to Dazed and Confused, same director, Richard Linklater. Um, but this is kind of in that vein of Dazed and Confused. Now, I know it came in this rental case and stuff. The Blu-ray is actually in here because I was a little worried about it. But no, it does have the, the Blu-ray copy. It does not have the DVD copy, which doesn't really bother me. Um, 
but I was like, okay, and it was it was used and it was cheap. So I was like, well, I'll get it. And if it has the Blu-ray, it has the Blu-ray. If it doesn't, oh well. But no, luckily it had the Blu-ray. Um, the DVD, I'm not really worried about. I'm trying to get away from DVD as much as possible. Uh, but cool. But this, And I can always buy a Blu-ray case and put it in, you know. Um, but this was a good flick. Uh, Kurt Russell's son is in it. Wyatt, he's one of the characters. Uh, Kellen Lutz is in it, unfortunately, from Expendables 3, but I thought he was okay in this movie. And, uh, or not Kellen Lutz, uh, Glenn Powell, my bad. And, uh, where, uh, Zoe, uh, Dutch is in it, I, that girl, that's actually Leah Thompson's daughter. Um, yeah, she's in this movie, I thought she did fine. Um, but yeah, not a, not a bad, you know, coming of age, college movie, you know, good, good movie, again, uh, the the spiritual sequel to Dazed and Confused, which is cool. Next up, I got Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I have not seen this movie in a long time. Uh, I like it. I remember liking it quite a bit, which was cool. Um, I know it's a romantic comedy, but this one I thought was pretty funny. I actually really like this. And a really good cast. Uh, Jason Siegel, I've always liked him. Um even Russell Brand, I've always liked. Uh, Mila Kunis is in it. Um, Kristen Bell, I like her as well. So, yeah, really, really good cast in here. Good movie. Next up, I got The Edge with Anthony Hopkins and uh, Alec Baldwin. I Another movie I've not seen in many, many, many years. Oh, bump the camera. Um, I have not seen this movie in such a long time. But it's a, it's a really good flick. It's a good survival movie. Um, underrated because you never hear people talk about it anymore. Um, but good movie in my opinion. Next up, I got a Mickey Rourke double feature. This is Angel Heart and Johnny Handsome. And this is when the Expendables came out. They did these, uh, Legends two packs of some movies. I have a couple other ones, but this one I wanted, <coughs> excuse me, uh, mostly for Johnny Handsome. Because uh, Walter Hill directed it. Um, Ellen Barkin, Elizabeth McGovern, Forrest Whitaker, Morgan Freeman are all in it. Uh, Ry Cooter did the music. Um, yeah, that was uh, mostly for that. But Angel Heart is good. I know it was uh, really controversial when it came out. Because Lisa Bonet was in it. And she's like naked half the movie and all this. Um, but... Both are good movies, but really wanted this more for, for Johnny Handsome, but still still cool. Next up, I got Phenomenon with John Travolta. I, I have not seen this movie in over 20 years. I really have not. Um, I remember liking it, though. But I remember watching it on TV. Um, it was on like ABC or something back in the day. Forrest Whitaker's in this one as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I remember remember liking this one. It's again, it's it's been so damn long since I've seen this movie, but good movie. And last but not least, in terms of the movies, um, I did get Shade with Sylvester Stallone. Well, yeah, Stallone's in it. He's not the main character, but uh, this just got released on Blu-ray a few months ago. Also, uh, Gabriel Byrne, uh, Thandi Newton, Jamie Foxx, Melanie Griffin is also in it. Uh, good movie. Again, uh, Stallone is not the main character, but I did really like his role in this movie and the rest of the cast did fine, but a uh, good flick. It has all the features from the DVD, which is nice. Uh, but at least, you know, the movies in high definition and stuff. So, and this is from MVD. Uh, they're getting next month. They're going to release, uh, I see you, which I'm really looking forward to because it's going to have the alternate version on there. So we'll see what happens, but yeah, good flick, Shade. And last but certainly not least, I did get uh, one TV show on DVD, which you guys kind of already saw this in the live stream, but it is the GI, the original GI Joe series. This is the Foot Locker set. I've really, really been wanting to get this for a while. Excuse me, and I went on eBay. I found it for. A really good price it's in really good shape a little you know a little scuffed up but it can get cleaned and, and everything like that but you know again uh really been wanting to get this for quite a while 
uh, and finally got it, you know, for a good price. And this is the legit set. This is not the cheap bootleg that's out there. Um, and it did come with the the J card, which I was really hoping it came with. But very, very cool. So you open it up. I thought this would be bigger because the foot lockers that we had in the Army were bigger. But you open it up, you get this really nice uh, cover on there, which is pretty cool. And then that opens up, and then inside here you get all the contents, which this comes out. Um, you get the discs in here, which I will show. You get uh, a dog tag flash drive, which has two new G.I. Joe comics. Very cool. And then uh, that's just telling you what's on the flash drive. And then advertisement for the Transformer set, which I also have. Uh, still has the temporary tattoos, which I'm obviously not going to use. There's an ad for the movie toys. And then the comics and video games uh, based on the movie. And then uh, you get the episode guide in here. Very cool. And then it also, uh, yeah, it's just the episode guide, and then it just tells you, like, what's on the features. And then each uh, disc comes in these little booklets. So this is the first nine discs. And then, uh, is there anything behind them? I can't remember. No, uh, just artwork, you know, artwork on the discs and stuff, which is very cool. And then this is discs 10 through 17, which is all of season two and the features. And then there is a spot for the G.I. Joe movie, which I will show in a second here. Uh, but very, very cool. Again, um, I've been wanting to get this set for quite a while. I am a fan of the original G.I. Joe cartoon. Um, I remember watching reruns and stuff back in the day. And this set does go for quite a bit of money now online, but I got it for a pretty decent price, at least in my opinion. Um, so there it is. That's the original G.I. Joe. And the seller also threw in the uh, Blu-ray DVD of the movie. I have the DVD version, but I'll trade that in or whatever and keep this because, I mean, not only does it come with the DVD version, but also the Blu-ray, which is what I wanted. So there's the discs in there, and then you get an ad for the G.I. Joe and Transformers set, and then the individual releases if one were to get that. And all the features are the same on both copies, which is nice. And then they also threw in uh, the only season. I know it says the first season, but they only did one of G.I. Joe Renegades. Uh, never seen this cartoon. This came on when the movie came out, which is very cool. Um, but again, I've, I've never seen this, so why not? Um, uh, Clancy Brown is in it. Um, Peter McNichol from Ghostbusters 2. Lee Majors. Okay, very, very cool. Uh, again, I'm looking forward to uh, to checking Renegades out. So, yeah, and then um, they'll be here this week, so they'll be in the next update. I did order the 90s G.I. Joe series, the one that Deke did. I found them on eBay pretty cheap. Uh, unfortunately, those are only on DVD. But they'll be here this week, and then I will have all the G.I. Joe uh, cartoons on DVD because I have the ones that didn't come out um and i have the stuff that did come out so very very cool so that's it again i know it was a little bit longer but i hope that you guys enjoyed this collection update have a good week and i will continue with the eddie murphy reviews and i'll talk to you guys later see ya